G'day and welcome to today's model workshop. Today I'm going to start a multi-part series all about building and painting scale model figures. Um, these are 135th German figures, but the principles apply across the board pretty much. So, let's get stuck in with part one, construction. <laughs> Today I am building the figures for my Krupp Prots diorama. So I've built two already. I've got the driver handing over his paperwork and a German military police officer, a Feldgendarmerie, terrible pronunciation I know, uh, but a German military police officer asking for the papers. So yeah, should work nicely. Um, story's great. The quality, however, I can't comment on. Well, I can. So, these are the two kits I'm using. We've got the German Feldgendarmerie. Gendarmerie? Feldgendarmerie? I don't know. I can't speak German. The German Field Police, basically, by Mini Art. And from Masterbox, German Infantry off to the front, Vehicle Riders, World War II era. And I've started with the Mini Art. These are the first two. The quality is terrible. Oh my goodness, look at the flash here. Check out. Let's get some focus. Look at the flash on this arm. It's killing me. The the, the sculpting is great, but the quality of the moulding is atrocious. Look at the flash there on this one here. Oh, it's just killing me. Even check out the fuzzy outline of the helmet here really killing me. Um, the fit is not so great either. So you can see where I've had to, let's put the camera down and zoom in, you can see where I've had to do a bit of work hiding some gaps around here, There's a bit of gap around there, I mean you always expect a little bit but oh it's pretty bad. There was some Pretty big gaps around there. Yeah, it's just it's not what I'm used to. Uh, the last few models I've built, I've used Masterbox almost completely entirely, and the Mini Art is a revelation to me of how it can be beautifully molded, but not beautifully engineered. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. Going to clean up some of this flash. Sadly, I do have to use this arm, but I'm going to clean up some of the flash. And get back to you soon. I'm uh, making another one and the fit is not good. Look at those gaps. Like a little gap I expect, but... Mm, not thrilled. Not thrilled at all, Mini Art. It's going to take a bit of fixing. I've been continuing on with my Master Box figures and they are a lot better fit a lot better structurally engineered than the Mini Art, but there are still issues. I mean, look at how massive this guy's head is, and here is the helmet that comes with it. Something looks off there. Let me just pop him back in and put the helmet on, and you'll see what I mean. So fiddly. I think you get a sense of that helmet in fitting that massive head plausibly anytime soon. The guy at the back, I've uh, also had a bit of an issue with the fit of the arms to actually hold the rifle, but it's nothing that a bit of putty won't correct. Um, so, yeah, now that I've done a couple, how do you build decent 135th plastic soldiers? Plastic figures. I'm glad you asked. Let's check it out. I like to use the tools you'll need. To me, a normal thick cement and extra thin cement. Um, the thick cement is good because you can glob it onto, say, an arm and it splodges out a tiny bit. If you get your amount just right, it splodges out a little bit and it kind of fills the seam, fills the gap. This stuff is perfect for filling gaps that haven't 
worked that way. Uh, and it's also just slightly better for sticking on like tools and pouches and things like that. It's less massive globs of glue. You'll need tweezers and a really sharp scalpel and something to cut them off the sprue. So I'm going to keep going with my master box one because the mini art one is a bit of a clunker and show you what I do. I'm going to build this figure next. So generally they group them all you know, in a, in a section of the sprue and I'm just going to cut them off with my scissors. Try and cut as close as you can to the sprue gate without actually cutting into the detail. And you'll see the places that these are attached are pretty much the standard spots. Elbows for arms, hips and feet. I hope you can see that for legs. Now I think I've actually, while I've been chitter chattering, I've cut off the wrong arm, so I'm just going to cut this one anyway. Okay, that'll do for now. I like, oh look, I'll cut the torso off as well. Um, I like to work a couple of pieces at a time because most of the time there's a lot of cleanup involved. Right, let's check how much cleanup is involved here. This is where your sharp scalpel comes in and you need it to be sharp. So you'll always have little bits left over like this where it's cut off from the sprue and you'll almost always have mold lines. So this little line just here, this little line just here is a seam. Um, arms are where they tend to be the worst. And these elbows are always a pain to work with, as is focus on something so small. Yeah. Come on, camera. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Goodness me, I'm going to have to stop this because focus is not working. Right, hopefully we stay in focus this time. He says, moving it all around. So, you want to really carefully trim as much as you can of that seam away because the seam is always a giveaway of a poorly made figure. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's not too bad. There's perhaps a little bit just down near the cuff still. The where it gets tricky is when you've got all these beautiful, beautiful moulded in folds here. And here, all I can say is use your lightest touch possible. You don't want to obliterate all that lovely moulded wrinkling of the fabric. And just use a nice strong light because it'll catch up It'll catch up, it'll catch all those shadows. So I'm pretty happy with that. Check the hand, quite often there's a little bit sort of webbing between the thumb and forefingers. And the other trick is always check down around the cuff because that's really easy to miss and it's one thing that will make it look really fake. So where the hand goes into the cuff, I mean, if you were hardcore, you'd drill out, cut the hand off, drill the sleeve out, stick the hand back in, but no one's that hardcore these days. That was a 1970s thing. Yep, I'm happy with that hand. I'm going to keep going, and you get the idea. Remove your seams, guys. It helps. Right, those seams are all done. So this is where the thicker, normal Tamiya cement comes in, because it's good for sticking halves together. You don't want to go crazy, but you want enough in there that when I stick these two halves of legs together, they will, that stuff will slightly, ever so slightly, squidge out. You don't want a lot. Oh, look, there's a, there's a sprue gate that I missed. There's a sprue joint that I missed. Bugger. So you want it to just fill those gaps nicely. The gaps on this one aren't too bad, and it's also a little bit forgiving in that you can adjust for a couple of minutes. That looks pretty good. Test it for just sitting down relatively straight on a peg. Yep, that looks good. So I'm going to have to come back and trim that little piece off the back there later. If you tried to do it now, you'd probably warp the position of the legs. 
and same again, sticking the torso down. You want to splodge on enough that it's like right near the edges, but it's not going to squeeze out like a big fat jam sandwich. You want it to fill the gap and not squish out. Yeah. That'll do nicely. So there's a little tiny gap just here. You can see it there. And that is where your extra thin will come in beautifully and it will seep into that gap with capillary action and it will melt the plastic and it'll get rid of that gap for you. No problem. So you don't have to fart about with any kind of putty. And like I said, it's also good because it gives you a little bit of time. Sorry, it's still talking about the thicker normal cement now. Still gives you a little bit of time to adjust things. So I'm going to stick these arms on as well. And yeah, I'll show you how that works. I'll show you how that works. I'm sure you have a fair idea how that works. So again, we're using the orange. Squidge it on there so there's enough of it and it will fill in those shoulder seams. Really tough to focus this, sorry guys. I hope this isn't too painful for you. And it's just started to come out and I'm happy with that. The real test is the back seam, how does that look? And that's a bit sketchy, there's a bit of a step there. So I'm gonna try and Get that a little neater. So the back looks better. Front's good. Back's good. There's a tiny step there still, but we can really easily get rid of that. Cool. I'm going to test that guy in my truck bed and see. <laughs> First, I'm going to knock the camera over. And then, second, I'm going to test him on the truck bed and see if he works. Not the greatest for that height there, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. That'll be fine. I'm cool with that. Alright. You get the idea now. This is where your extra thin cement comes in handy. So, he's stuck together. He's still slightly malleable. Um, if I really tried, I could bend those arms and stuff. But I'm not going to. But the extra thin cement is really good for getting into cracks like this one that I mentioned earlier, just underneath the belt. And if there were any sort of really big seams around his shoulders, so over here on the left, his left shoulder, a bit of a seam, a bit of a seam, a bit of a gap. So just putting that in there and let capillary action do the work for you. And that'll melt down the plastic and hopefully those two halves will come together. And if they don't, a bit of a putty, that's where you'll do it. So, now, the other thing that the extra thin is good for is attaching little tiny details like these cartridge pouches. Because you don't want to put a great big glob of glue on that and then try and stick it down because the glue is just going to go everywhere, the, the thicker glue. I'm just doing a bit of a test fit here. Tweezers come in handy. Yeah, I reckon that's going to work nicely. That'll be fine. So this would be another case where you can either put the glue on the back of that, or you can put a, put a, put a bit of glue there, stick it on the extra thin stuff. It's your friend here. I've pretty much finished construction. There's a couple of pieces I'm leaving off. Mostly things like rifles on the back of these two guys that's slung over their shoulders just because they're easy to break and it's much much easier to paint them without the rifle on there and obviously this guy here I want to mold some hair on him oh, there you go a couple this guy sitting down I want to mold some hair on him and cut off that chin strap because I'm going to leave him without a helmet on just to vary it up a little and as you can see particularly on this guy oh, this guy here there are some pretty big gaps around those arms that I need to fill in so that's going to be my next set, filling gaps.
So what I recommend is run a critical eye, a hypercritical eye, over your build so far. Um, this chap, for example, let's get a bit of focus on him. Not too bad. The sleeves are pretty okay. That's the main area of really on these, I find, is the sleeves. This looks a little dodgy here, but there's meant to be a seam in the clothing there. So for him, I might try and fix a little tiny bit just around that sleeve top just there. But again, you don't want to completely delete the sleeve join. You can see there's a little bit of glue that's globbed out just here. Looks terrible now, but once you paint it, you'll be fine. It won't show. Uh, let's have a look. The worst offender is this guy sitting down. So, to, he's going to be holding a rifle in his hands there. And to make those arms fit the rifle, I put the rifle in while I was letting the glue set. This is how his arm has ended up. So it's a pretty big gap here. At the back, not so bad. Focus. Yeah. At the back, it's not so bad on this side. On this side, yeah, a fair bit of filler is going to be required around there. Otherwise... He's pretty okay. I might check on this gas mask here, gas mask canister, and just make sure that it doesn't look too crappy once I prime it. And otherwise, not too bad on this guy. Maybe a little tiny bit required just up the top here, near the epaulette. Again, you don't want to obscure details, obliterate details. Um, this is another offender. So, I know there's meant to be a seam down the great coat here, or the motorcycle coat, whatever it is, the wet weather gear, um, but that just feels a little clunky to me. And definitely around here, there's some fixing to be done. His arms really didn't fit great at all. A little bit here, just to hide the worst of that gap. So, what do I use? I'm glad you asked. I use... This stuff, Humbrol model filler, but it's basically just because it was there. Any, any kind of modelling putty, milli putts, anything at all, is good. As long as it sets hard, you're fine. Um, I'm going to get that out, get it ready, and show you how I do it. Let's start with our worst offender. So that's what this stuff looks like in the tube. <clears throat> if it focuses, ah, you get the idea. Right. That's what it looks like in the tube. I generally get a sharp toothpick. Glob some out. Oh man, wouldn't it be good if it was in focus? Right, glob some out. And then stick it where you need it. Um, the beauty of this stuff is it's water soluble to a point. So if you don't like what you've done, just you know, wash it away, wet your finger and wash it away. The, the the downside to this stuff is it dries fairly quickly, as especially on a hot day. So today it's a 37 degree day here in Australia. So it's pretty warm. It's not an ideal day to be doing this, to be honest. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to get that off camera so that the camera focuses a little better on the guy. Uh, yeah, it's really not an ideal day be doing it's perhaps a little bit too hot perhaps a bit foolish but you know it is what it is so again just be careful you haven't obliterated detail like those wrinkles and you know while you're working with the stuff work with it while it's wet because once it dries it's a bastard to try and get rid of now if you want I've just licked my finger Class and smear it over the top. Class all the way. And that just gets rid of any kind of high points. Using my fingernail, try and get it off those little tiny wrinkles there. Alright, so that's already looking a whole lot better. It's still a little fake. I might do another layer. Yeah, it's a bit too low here still. Um, I might do another layer if I have to later, just to get it up to the right height. And again, you can lick your finger, 
try and use a different finger each time because I'm sure this stuff is carcinogenic. And smush it down. There. That is looking a lot better. The other side. Yeah, the other side's not so bad. At the back there, yeah, probably could do it a little bit just here, but not a lot. Again, lick a different finger, wash your hands regularly, and that gets rid of a lot of it. I don't know, you may have a better technique, but that's how I make it work, and I'm happy. That looks so much better. And if you don't like any bits, you can kind of carve them off. Once it's dried, you can carve them off. Or, if you're smart, you can kind of try and get rid of them now. Because it is so much easier to work with while it's wet. Alright, I'm happy with that. A little bit of painting, that's going to be fine. He's done. That's how you do it. Uh, where's our next guy? So, officer here, I said maybe a tiny, tiny bit just near that top of that sleeve there again get some out drop it in the spot you want it and again <laughs> lick a different finger just scratching it away from where it's on that sleeve where it was actually fine Bit crap. All right, I'm going to glob on a big bit. I'm using my thumbnail to get rid of those bits. I think that's okay. It might need a little sanding once it's dry but you definitely can't see that nasty little gap anymore so that's good and that's it I'm going to go through do the rest of them and then I'll show you how these all look as a completed group easy peasy the last thing I'm going to attempt is to mold some hair on this guy so I've trimmed away the chin strap that was on his chin logically I'm going to get some putty and see what I can do to just mould some realistic hair. And this, I don't know, you know, if it works, brilliant. If it doesn't work, I'll just plonk a helmet on him. So I'm globbing on some of this stuff, some of the model filler. Milliput would actually be better for this. Um, but, you know, use what you got. Um, also for, for seams, uh, sprue goo is also really really good for what we're doing here today so sprue goo is where you get bits of old sprue put it into a container of extra thin cement and it all kind of blobs together to create a thick goo sprue goo and that can be used to sort of paint into crevices and creases and things and um, hardens to give you yeah, whatever you want there. So, that's some fabulous looking hair already. But I'm not going to leave it like that. <laughs> Looks like he's had an electric shock. Oh my god. Um, yeah, very, very early days here. So, how am I going to do this? Well, I've got an old scalpel blade that I planned to try and use for this. So it's fairly bluntish. I kind of like the effect over this side. I might try and leave that, see if I can just get it tamed a little bit on this side. Get some more, sorry guys, not much to see there. Get some more of this. You know what? 
I'm going to run with that. Oh, it looks a bit too pay at the back. <laughs> yep, that's the look I was going for, the too pay look. I'm going to run with that. I'm happy. A little bit here in his temple I'm going to get rid of. That looks like hair to me. Messy hair, but hair. Yep, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't know, I look a bit crap once I paint it. Still looks too pay here. Just sort of batten it down a little. Tamp it down, that's probably a better word. Yeah, okay. Alright, that's my hair guy. So, I mean, this stuff's fun to play with. Hey guy, done. That's better than I expected. How's that? Kapow! <laughs> I'm happy. Alright, so, I can actually see a little bit of bad seam work on his leg there. Check this out. But you, you've got to be hypercritical on these seams, you really do. Molding seams, because they just look terrible. That's a bit better. Alright, hey guy's done. He's having a casual drink of water in the back of the ute. Um, so I'm going to pretty much call it a day there, I think, for part one on building model figures. Um, and yeah, construction. Done. I'll show you each of these guys in turn. Show you the... Did I do any seam work there? So I did a little bit of seam work. Focus... <sighs> Come on. A little bit of seam work on his shoulder. Not a lot on his left shoulder. Uh, this chap, a bit of seam work on his left shoulder as well, on his right shoulder, sorry. It just, yeah, there was a bit of a gap there. A uh, bit of seam work on this shoulder, on his right shoulder, the figure's right shoulder. And I'm just going to try and scrape off a bit there. That's better. I uh, don't think this guy needed anything at all. No, he's pretty fine. I'm uh, yeah, I'm happy with him. And the officer you saw, uh, this guy, a bit of seam work around his right shoulder again, but otherwise pretty good. I'm hoping the focus is okay here, guys. Oh, and a bit there too. Yeah, massive apologies if it's not. It's really frustrating. You saw this chap. And... Oh yes, so the, the sentry in his motorcycle coat. So a fair bit there, quite a lot at the back, and it looks it looks a little bit ragged around here. If I need to, I can sort of sculpt away at it with a scalpel once it's dry, but for now I'm going to leave it and just see how bad it looks once it's primed. Priming is when all the horrors come out. It's when you see if all your stuff worked, or if it didn't. Alright guys, so that's construction. I'm going to leave it there, gonna get my hand out of the way, and I'm going to say tune in next time for the next one, which will be about starting painting. But for now, this is Dave from Dave's Model Workshop, signing off on my model figures building and painting series. Okay, see ya. Bye.